वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन द लास्ट थ्री क्लासेस यू हैव बीन एक्सटेंसिवली डिस्कसिंग एन ओ ई फिनामिना इन द लास्ट क्लास स्पेशली वी डिस्कस अबाउट कॉरिलेशन टाइम हाउ द रिलेटेड स्पेक्ट्रल डेंसिटी फंक्शन एंड हाउ इट अफेक्ट्स एन ओ ई एंड वी डिस्कस लॉट अबाउट स्पेक्ट्रल डेंसिटी फंक्शन वेर वाट हैपन्स वेन J omega r omega tau c is very much greater smaller than one extreme narrowing condition in omega tau c is very much greater than one the diffusion limit and also we also saw that in omega tau c is approximately equal to one there is it is a condition it is a situation where there won't be any noe we saw the uh, plots of various plots of omega tau c was a function of signal intensity enhancement is e noe and we saw it is positive for small molecules and negative for bigger molecules that's what we saw and maximum gain in the signal intensity we have in extreme narrowing condition we we got the parameters equations for transition probabilities w1 w0 and w2 substituted that in the solomon equations then we saw that in extreme narrowing condition the gain in the intensity or noe is half of course depends upon the ratio of the gammas for homonuclear case it was 0.5 that's what we observed so we can we, we saw that and for different heteronuclear case gamma factor comes into picture and i showed the example of varieties of nuclei where gamma no enhancement factor was there and it can start from you know uh, for uh, carbon 13 200% to varieties of nuclei up to even 1600 times we saw that that means If I record the carbon thirteen spectrum with proton decoupling, then I am going to get twice the enhancement of the intensity, two hundred times, two hundred percent, or two hundred times, two hundred percent. Similarly, we also saw that if I decouple carbon thirteen and absorb proton, the enhancement will be of the order of twelve point five percent. That's what we saw. So, all the all these things we understood. Of course, N O E is. Understanding concept is bit difficult. Lot more things are there to discuss. As I told you, there are exclusively two books only on NOE itself. Imagine the vastness of the subject. So everything can't be discussed. But I gave you the basic ideas, concepts, everything to understand. And when you do an NOE experiment, there are number of NOE experiments which I discuss in the in next this class and the next class. And then we will understand how to do the experiment. Everything. But there will be some complications by doing NOE. Those complications we have to understand before interpreting the NOE properly. So we will start with that today. So starting with the complications of NOE here. Selective saturation of resonance is very very important. Consider important. I am talking about steady state NOE because I tell you what is steady state NOE everything. So far we have not introduced two D NOE. That's why NOE means I, as I have been telling you. I hit a particular resonance and see the change in the intensity of the other uh, peak. So, how do you do this? Selectively hit this one. Selectively, I have to saturate one of the particular resonance. The selectivity of the, the thing is very very important. The frequency has to be properly set. Otherwise, then little disturbance and if, if you saturate a neighboring proton, then because of the spillover of the RF, that can cause problems. so that means the selectivity of the frequency is an important condition and of course if you have multiplicity at the peak where do you want to hit it you have to hit perturb exactly the center of this and make sure that multiplicities are but subjected to perturbation properly if all the multiplicities are not equally perturbed or not equally saturated you at a time then that results in selective population transfer we discussed this long back that can also cause problems anti phase terms of the j couple multiplets are going to be seen that's what we observed in uh, population transfer experiments when we discussed that so integrate if you take the positive negative intensity signal anti phase if you take the area of that integrate area integral area that is zero so that means if you don't selectively exit I mean, if you don't exert the multiplicity or saturate the multiplets of the peak properly, if they are not perturbed properly, unequal perturbation can give rise to antiphase multiplets. Multiplets, 
and if you take the area total area intensity of that area of that particular uh, multiplied becomes zero so it will mask the genuine noe there may be noe because is our of unequal perturbation whatever noe is there will not be seen it gets masked so that's another thing selectivity and uni and uniform perturbation in the multiple dead are important things this is an example to show what happens in a spectrum like this this is selectively saturated but you see it is not uniformly saturated it so happens and if it when the difference is taken see there is a anti phase components there now if you take the area of this what will happen it may become zero then you will not see any if at all if there is any so these are all problems of unequal perturbation of multiplets the multiplets are not properly perturbed you are going to get this type of problems there is one one another effect called three spin effect we have to discuss that for example i have three spins so far you know all understanding no everything with two two spins we took into account in the understanding omega tau c and you know dipolar relaxation everything we took only two spins it it can so happen there can be many spins neighboring for example three spin there is a famous thing what is called three spin effect i am irradiating proton yes let us say r s whatever it is and there is it is giving noe because of cross correlation with i spin but there can be a leakage of this i spin instead of gaining magnetization it may lose it by give it another spin next to it this is called a leakage but this is a three spin effect it can cause problems for example i will tell you how there is a, there could be indirect effects lot of indirect effects could be there take for example a, mo a molecule which are linearly it is like this there are linear set, linear molecule in a realistic molecule i am saturating proton a assuming there is an noe i must see the intensity increase in b that's true if there is noe i will see that and there will be dipolar cross relaxation between b and c as a consequence there is a intensity decrease here on c and also it can so happen this also can decrease because it is giving its magnetization to c it can happen so this is all indirect and oe effect means the third spin is there instead of it seeing the intensity may come down or here also it may change intensity may change because population is getting transferred from b to c also due to dipolar cross relaxation between b and c these are all the important factors that one should know and this is a called a spin diffusion the spin diffusion means there are three like this a will you are saturating a b should have enhancement b can give it to c but this is a spin diffusion phenomena that is a linear molecule take a situation of a mang uh, angular molecule which has some angle like this a b c are not linear it is an angular structure is there for the angular structure like this there can be direct noe between a and c in the previous case it is indirect noe because a you are saturating your b is getting enhanced b will give it to c and you know it is a it's you see noe intensity and c it is not actually real because of the direct indirect effect from a a to b b to c here i mean uh, angular stack molecule with an angular structure i am irradiating a let us say a direct noe effect can be there between a and c that is positive but what will happen because you know this can get nullified due to indirect effect between a and c what will happen to a b a to b b to c will be there there can be direct noe between a and c that is positive we should expect but because then when you are saturating this this also gets saturated and then it this gives this thing to this suppose then it can sometimes so get so happen or this um, can give back to its magnetization to that it can get diminished or get even nullified because of indirect effect between a and c although there is a direct noe this can get suppressed okay that's how some of the problem three spin effect angular molecule linear molecule varieties of things we know that <coughs> and frequency of selectivity 
are equally a perturbation of the multiplets. All are needed. So many complications are there in NOI. I just wanted to brief you. There could be many complications in NOI when you are doing the experiment. All right. Now, how many types of NOI experiment we can do? There are different NOI experiments possible based on how they are the experiments are designed. For example, there can be what is called a steady state NOI. That is a one D difference NOI convention. What we, we we used to do earlier. Of course, now also we do. There is another called transient NOI, two D NOI. There is also gradient NOI, steady state NOI, where you know that transient NOI we use in the one D format with gradients. That's also there. Usually, two D NOI is transient NOI, two D NOC. Rotating frame NOI called ROC. There is also called transverse NOI. NOE. Heteronuclear war as a effect, OC. Couple of them only I lift, I have listed. All this, there are different types of NOE experiments. All are homonuclear and this is heteronuclear. We will see quickly couple of them, how it works. I mean, idea basically so far we have discussed. Conceptual understanding of NOC remains same, NOE. There is not much of a difference. But small experimental modifications will be there, and what will happen when in, in, in each of these experiments? Quickly, we'll see a couple of examples. So what is the steady state NOE? This is very simple experiment where we are going to selectively saturate one of these pins for a long time with a very low power, and then apply an anti-degree pulse, start collecting the signal. During the long pre-saturation time, what happens? Spins are coupled via NOE are able to reach a steady state. They are coupled to each other. I know you are saturating a spin, it may give energy to I spin. Slowly, it will NOE will be built up on I spin and then it will reach a steady state, it will reach equilibrium. This occurs on the T1 scale and the relaxation time scale. So, this is a simple example, that is why it is called a steady state. Saturate one of the spins and NOE coupled spins coupled via NOE after a long time reach a steady state. That is what it is. Then, how do you carry out this 1D difference NOE experiment? Very easy. All that you have to do is you have to selectively saturate a proton or a particular spin or signal where by a very low power RF, I showed in the previous slide pulse sequence, very low RF pre-saturated, apply a 90 pulse and collect the signal. That is what we do. That is a simple one dimensional experiment. Only thing is pre-saturation is done before, before applying a detective pulse uh, that uh, detection pulse 90 degree to pre-saturate the selected signal. Okay. Apply a similar RF power at a very far off distance so that none of the intensity of the signal are disturbed, they should not be perturbed. Why? We have to maintain the ide ideal conditions, so that I want to see the difference of the two. What we do is, first collect the spectrum by saturating a proton and then identical similar RF power you have to apply far away from the spectrum of your interest RF and then far away. So, that means, if there is a disturbance because of the RF, it is uniform throughout for both the spectra collect the spectrum. This one which is you are not saturating any signal, you are saturating at a far off place is called a reference spectrum. Take this reference spectrum and then take a difference of this spectrum, this spect reference spectrum with the spectrum you have chosen or you have collected after selectively saturating a particular signal. So, take the difference like this. This is an experiment. Do a control experiment where you can irradiate the signal at very much far away that is called off resonance collect the signal. Do on resonance and a selectively on a particular signal continuously pre saturating both identical power in both the cases again collect the signal subtract direct the difference between the two and then you are going to see NOE. If there is any difference if there is any enhancement of the signal the diff if there is no enhancement on anything if you take the difference the identical spectrum will be there then there won't be any signal, you will get 0. But if there is NOE on particular some of the signal, when you are selectively saturating one of the signals, 
then that signal will show interchange that will not get nullified when you take the difference. This is what happens. The difference of the two spectrum shows NOE enhancement if there is any. Okay. This is an example to show. See, we are saturating one of them. This is the conventional spectrum, and this is what is saturated, and then you see the difference. This is the I'm sorry, this is the normal spectrum. This is spectrum saturated, this peak is saturated here. You see the difference. I'll tell again. This is a normal spectrum, and this particular peak is saturated here. There is no signal because of saturation. And the difference of this and this is taken. Of course, this is negative because it is saturated, and this is full signal is here, and there is no signal here that is saturated. And you see, this is a there is enhancement here and here. All these things get completely cancelled out, whereas there is enhancement here and here. That tells you this proton and this proton are having NOE, are getting NOE because of this proton you are saturating. That will establish these two are in close to, in space close to each other. There is a spatial proximity between these two. That's what it tells you. Okay. If the saturation recovery is not set to few T1, we have to set for a few T1. Selective saturation is not enough to create full NOE. Of the order of several T1, we have to put normally what we have to do is 5 times T1. 5 times T1 is otherwise spins would not have completely relaxed back. Saturation signal would not have completely attained equilibrium. Only after it attains equilibrium, you have to apply a pre saturation pulse, otherwise, there will be error in the NOE. So, you have to wait for th certain time, normally 5 times T1 you have to do, but in most of the cases in the routine experiment that is not necessary, we give only 1 or 2 times T1 or maximum 3 times T1 and then do the NOE experiment. That is the steady state NOE. After uh, conceptual understanding of all these techniques, we will take several examples of 1D NOE, steady state NOE, everything, and then interpret the spectrum really with many examples. Now, I will introduce a HOSI. HOSI is called heteronuclear overhazard spectroscopy. Here, pulse sequence is very simple. You have 90 tau 90, and then we have 180 pulse at the center of one of them. Obviously, that uh, causes decoupling. This is what happens. Here, the magnetization evolves during the T1 period, I am applying 90 pulse. So, all the at the proton frequencies magnetization is evolving, and then we apply a 180 pulse here that causes decoupling between two spins, and then apply a 90 degree pulse again and the proton channel, and then mixing time here, mixing pulse, give a time for the mixing. Spins will start mixing, talking to each other. After some time, apply a pulse on the detection channel that is x, you are detecting x nuclei while decoupling proton completely. If it is carbon 13 you are doing, this is carbon 13, this is proton, apply a proton pulse, things evolve here at the proton frequencies and decouple carbon proton coupling here and then in the T1 dimension, apply 90 degree pulse, allow the spins to mix, there is exchange of energy between the spin based on the spatial proximity between the two heteronuclear spins. Then apply carbon 13 uh, 90 degree pulse collect the FID while doing proton decoupling. This is a simple pulse sequence for HOSI. All right. This is an ex experiment to show how we can do a HOSI on varieties of nuclei. This is a HOSI spectrum of proton and lithium. See this is the thing we are like this is the proton here and lithium is giving correlation to this, this and this and not to other things. Based on the correlation, you will know just how close they are in space. This is what it is and is a, this is a classic example from our work. This is a molecule which you are looking at. Here there is CF3, there is CF3 here and this is HOSI. Here there is a fluorine and proton. Our idea was to find out whether there is any, how close they are because we are working on the hydrogen bonding. We want to see 
the spatial proximity is important for hydrogen bonding. We wanted to see how close they are in space. So, we did fluorine 19 OC, the two nuclear over other effect. In which case, if there is a close place, there is a spatial proximity between these two, you must get the cross mix. That is what we observed. We did that and we are going to see cross mix here. We observed that. Okay. This is a proton axis, this is fluorine axis. There are two fluorines here, each of them having a, some giving rise to certain cross peaks. This is the next one. To compare that, we also did the HOSI. Of course, we have not discussed about the 2D NOSI. I will discuss that when I come to a detailed discussion of NOSI. A lot of examples we have to take. We will discuss that. This is 19F, 19F NOSI here. That establishes spatial proximity between, proximity between this CF3 and this CF3 and that is what it is and this is CF3, this is a diagonal peak gives their chemical shift and this is a cross peak and this is a cross peak showing they are close in space. These are all NOE cross peaks. Here of course, is the HOC, this cannot be symmetric like this because heteronuclei I told you like in HSQC, they are not symmetric like in COSI. Similarly here, no C it is symmetric but not HSQC, not HOC. Another one I want to introduce is what is called a ROSI. Rotating frame over other effect. Why do we do that? What is meant by rotating frame? Over, uh, see, a lot about rotating frame. Everything we discussed, I have discussed in one of my very first or second courses. If some, some anybody is interested, they can see some of the lectures there, where I discuss what is uh, rotating frame and everything. Now, look at this graph. We saw this graph. I told you, this is a situation where omega tau c is equal to approximately one where you will not see any NOE. This happens for small and mid sized molecule. Now, you, I want to identify, analyze this, use the NOE for various purposes. NOE can be used to establish some assignment, some ritual specificity of the molecules, finding out spatial proximity, confirmation, etcetera. But then if it, NOE is not there, how can I use it? This is a problem now. At omega tau c equal to 0, there is no NOE. How do you overcome this situation? Of course, one thing is change the spectrometer frequency because it depends upon omega tau c. Change the spectrometer frequency instead of 100 megahertz go to 800 megahertz or whatever the frequency or change tau c. Tau c changes means molecular tumbling. How do you change the molecular tumbling? It you vary the temperature, increase the temperature, tumbling becomes faster. If it is fast, lower it, tumbling becomes slow or change the solvent of different viscosity. If the viscosity is very, very small, molecules tumble faster. In a highly viscous solvent, they tumble slowly. So, various experimental tricks we can adapt. If you want to overcome this double omega tau c situation, which is equal to 1, where there is no NOE situation, you can do any of these three things. Change the spectrometer frequency, change the rate of molecular tumbling by changing temperature of the solvent. All right. Instead of altering the solution condition, why can't we do a different experiment? That is a, instead of physically altering all these conditions, we can do that. Then we can do NOE in the rotating frame. That is an advantage. In that situation, what is the advantage you may ask me? Why should I do in the rotating frame? Remember, in the rotating frame, there is no negative NOE, no zero NOE, always positive NOE you will get for any size of the molecule. Why, so, why can't we do that? So, that is what we do, but only thing is it has a limitation it is less effective for molecules longer T1 due to application of longer mixing time here. We are in the rotating frame, we are going to apply a longer mixing time. As a consequence, then if your spins have longer T1, then what will happen? It will be less effective. Do not worry about that, that is some condition, some limitation which I told you to be careful while doing the experiment. Let us see about the cross relaxation rate for homo homonuclear spins during NOE and during, during ROE both. This is what we observed, NOE fact, this is cross correlation time, cross relaxation time, not gain the signal intensity, do not uh, confuse with rho i, yes, that is not that, this is sigma i, yes, cross relaxation. The, this is the cross relaxation term for NOE. The same cross relaxation time you can calculate for ROE 
this turns out to be this. Now consider a situation, varieties of situation here. I want to take the example here. Supposing omega tau c is very, very small or omega tau c, uh, consider a situation omega tau c is approximately equal to 1. In a situation omega tau c equal to 1, then what will happen? See, this is 2, then still it is a positive term. I am sorry, not that, that here. Now, I am uh, uh, this what I wanted to show you this one, this one omega tau c, still it is a positive term. Here, of course, things different, I am not discussing that, varieties that things will happen. In the ROI, when omega tau is approximately equal to 1, then you will see that 3 by 2 plus 2 into this one, this crash relaxation is there, that is always there, that gives rise to positive NY. The ROI is always positive for all values of omega tau c here, because crash relaxation is there. For small molecules, ROI matches with that of the NOE. Approximately 40 percent it uh, matching is there, NOE, approximately 40 percent. For our large molecules, ROI goes up to 68 percent. For small molecules, there is no issue. It can match to, to with their uh, transient type of NOE. This is a steady state NOE we were talking. ROE we can also do in the 1D way and 2D way. I will tell all those things later. For a small molecule, ROE matches with that of the transient NOE, what you get up to 40 percent. For large molecule, this goes above 68 percent. Under no circumstances, ROE becomes 0. Under no circumstances, NOE can become 0 when the is approximately equal to 1, but ROE never becomes 0. That is important thing you should remember. So, the NOE and ROE growth rates are identical for small molecules. If I look at the growth rate, how the NOE is building up. In both the situations, it is identical, but for large molecules, they differ a lot. That is what we see. Growth rate is up to 68 percent for large molecules. All right, we will see this one. Consider a situation omega tau c is very much smaller than 1. The crash relaxation rate for both transient and uh, this thing, transient NOE, that is NOE and ROE, can be given like this. For uh, omega tau c greater than 1, this is what it is. For uh, this, for in the situation omega tau c is smaller than 1, this equation applies to both NOE and ROE. When omega tau c is larger than 1, this and this are different. ROE is different. You know, see here, ROE and NOE both are different. One has negative sign, other is positive. So, dependence of ROE and NOE on omega tau c for an isolated two homonuclear spins, if I consider this how it is. ROE starts here, goes here from 40 percent up to 68 percent, always positive. Whereas, NOE starts with 50 percent, comes down, it goes to 0, goes negative. This is a simple graphically telling illustrates and omega tau c how the ROE and NOE will change. As you, omega tau c keeps increasing or changing here as in the, on the logarithmic scale, ROE keeps building up, whereas NOE from positive becomes negative. All the time you, can, you should see here, ROE has never become negative, starting with positive and it goes only at positive. For large molecule, ROE grows twice as fast as NOE and as an opposite side here, you see. ROE develops conceptually in the magnetization the transverse plane, whereas NOE is developed along z axis. This is a very interesting thing. Of course, when we discussed about the NOE, I told you the it magnetization transfer takes place only along z axis. Whereas, NOE is whereas ROE it will take place in the x y plane, transverse plane. Remember two things NOE development is there along z axis, along the longitudinal axis, whereas ROE development is along transverse plane in the x axis or y axis. So, magnetization exchange during NOE and ROE, if you want to see pictorially, it is like this. In the ROE, they have a anti-phase magnetization vectors, one for the inverted spin and the other one, which is closed in space. 
where the magnetization transfer takes place. This is the inverted spin, this is the other spin. And in the, the ROI, same thing happens. This is the inverted spin and the other spin is here. Both both are anti phase in the x y axis along y axis in the transverse plane. The effector spin lock is to retain the spins. We are going to I will show you in the uh, uh, next one the pulse sequence of that. There is spin lock pulse in ROE. The effect of spin lock is to retain the spin vector so that it won't get disposed of. The, so that ROE develops only during this time due to cross relaxation. If you don't spin lock it, then the vectors may start moving away. So this is a simple ex pulse sequence for 1D rosy pulse sequence. We apply 190, 180 pulse on the selective spin followed by immediately an anti pulse apply a spin lock this is called a mixing time that is with ROE takes place collect the signal that is what it is ROE develops during mixing time this is a simple one dimensional rosy pulse sequence ROE and this is what is called the relax rotating frame when you are doing the spin locking your spins are in the rotating frame and that is where ROE is the going to develop okay. So, for ROE the targeted peak is always first inverted by a selective 180 pulse and then followed by a non-selective pulse. Then what will happen? The effect is a 270 pulse. When, it, when you have a 270 pulse the signal gets inverted related to other peak this is negative intensity because you have a receiver here and bring the magnetization to along this axis this is positive. The signal is on the other direction after bringing it to by 270 degree it is a negative signal. So, this is a negative signal will be there. So, this magnetization spin locked in the transverse plane. What happens during spin lock? Of course, chemical shifts are refocused. Okay, that is what we discussed in the toxic. When we discuss toxic during the spin lock, spins lose their identity. There will not be any chemical shift at all. They are all refocused and spins will relax only in the rotating frame. That relaxation time in the rotating frame is called T1 rho. Spins relax in the rotating frame, still, even though they are locked, uh, lo spin locked along the particular axis in the transverse plane, spins can still relax. That is called relaxation in the rotating frame denoted as T1 rho. Okay. So, in NOE, the effective field is B0, but in ROE, the effective field is B1. Why? I showed you in the graph. NOE this is both source inverted source is along z axis negative z and other six spin is along z axis, but in the ROE it is like this one is x axis y axis other is minus y axis that is the rotating frame. In the rotating frame the magnetic field is B1 RF field which you apply whereas in the NOE the magnetic field is static magnetic field which is huge very large. This is what makes the NOE dynamics be completely different in both the cases because magnetic fields are different. You let us understand what, uh, what it does. You see, if you take gamma B naught in the, is the resonating frequency, it is in megahertz. If the B naught is huge of the order of several Tesla, whereas gamma B1 is very small a few of the order of few kilohertz because B1 is small. So, gamma B1 is very much smaller than gamma B naught. Similarly, omega 1 is very much smaller than omega naught because they are all related to each other omega is equal to gamma b naught over 2 pi is the resonating frequency that is what we discussed. Thus for omega tau c is smaller than 1 for all values of tau c you have everything is positive omega tau c for all smaller than 1 molecules behave as if they are in the extreme narrowing limits hence r y is always positive it is like a small magnetic field it is an extreme narrowing limit hence ROE is always positive and of course we can extend this to a 2D way to do the experiment everything I will come to that ok I may not go to 2D but same experiment if you do in, in here in, you vary this as a function of T1 and collect the signal and apply spin lock for a mixing this only you vary collect signal here this is T2 and then do the 2D Fourier transformation you get a signal like this ok this I will come to that later. And there are also certain complications in rosy everything. Since the time is getting up, I am going to stop here. Today, what we discussed is about lot of things about the NOSI, NOE experiments, starting from varieties of things we discussed.
like several experiments, what is rho z, steady state in OE, what is ho z, how we get the signal, what are the pulse sequences in ho z, what is the pulse sequence in uh, rho z and what happens to rho z in the spin lock equation. In the omega tau z approximately equal to 1, there is no NOE. In such a situation, instead of changing the physical parameters, we can go to a, an experiment called ROE by rho z, where you can do the NOE in the rotating frame. In that case, NO is always positive, never, never goes to negative, never goes to 0. That is what we saw. And we saw that for swarm molecule, NO is up, up to 40 percent matches with the uh, ROE matches with NOE. For bigger molecule, it goes up to 68 percent and always positive compared to NOE, which is the opposite in size. And the growth rate is faster at, uh, for uh, ROE for bigger molecules, it goes up to twice the speed. So, NOE growth is, we observed all those things, how the thing. Uh, NOE grows in both NOE, ROE, everything. Our signal grows, signal gain will be there in both NOE, ROE, etc. We discussed a lot today. So, we are going to stop here. Bit more about complications for ROE, etc. I will tell in the next class. We are almost coming to the end of the understanding of the concepts, concepts of NOE. I took almost 2 to 3 classes or even more, maybe 3 classes just to tell you about NOE and its concept because it is a huge topic to understand. Lot of complications are there, lot of very, but it gives a very, very beautiful information about the structure of the molecules. So, there are a number of experiments I said in NOE itself we can do. I mentioned only couple of them and gave one or two examples, but we will see the utility of them in the subsequent classes one or two of them. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs>